Hello, I'm Dr. Gonzalez and today in this video we're going to talk about the following topics. The brain is a complex three-dimensional structure that performs a lot of functions just like an organic computer. Um, and the brain consists of approximately 20 billion neurons. And that's a lot. So the brain has several parts, uh, including the cerebrum, which is with this big structure that you can see here. Um, it has the, the encephalon, where the thalamus is located, and the hypothalamus. Um, in terms of the cerebrum, uh, it, the, it's the area that uh, processes conscious thoughts, uh, intellectual functions. It's the area for memory storage and processing and it's the area for conscious and subconscious regulation of the skeletal muscle contractions. Meanwhile, the encephalon, which is the second area I just mentioned, uh, where the thalamus is, this, this is a relay and processing center for sensory information. Meanwhile, your hypothalamus is the centers controlling emotions, autonomic functions, and hormone production. Uh, then we have the mesencephalon where the midbrain is located. Uh, midbrain is not visualized from this view, but the midbrain is for processing uh, of visual and auditory data, uh, generating uh, reflexive somatic motor responses, and maintaining consciousness. Then the pons, which is inferior to the midbrain, uh, it's the area for relay sensory information to the cerebellum, which is this structure right here, um, and the thalamus, which is superior to the midbrain. And it's also the area for sub subconscious, somatic, and visceral motor centers. And last but not least, we have the medulla oblongata, which is the area uh, for relay sensory information to the thalamus and other portions of the brainstem. Uh, it's also the area for autonomic centers that regulate visceral function like your cardiovascular, respiratory, and digestive system activities. Uh, the cerebrum has these two cerebral hemispheres, left and right. So in this superior view, imagine this is a superior view, uh, left and right brain hemispheres. Um, the two hemispheres are separated by a longitudinal fissure, which is the space you're seeing right there. Um, and the hemispheres consist of lobes, like, and it also consists of central sulcus, lateral sulcus, and the different lobes. So the cerebral lobes, starting over here with the frontal lobe, it's the most anterior one. Um, and it's the area for conscious control of the skeletal muscle, amongst other functions like personality. Then is the parietal lobe. Parietal lobe is posterior to the frontal lobe and the most superior uh, of all of the lobes. Parietal lobe is the area for conscious perception of touch, pressure, vibration, pain, temperature, and taste. Posterior to the parietal lobe and the most posterior lobe of all is the occipital one, occipital lobe. And the occipital lobe, it's the area for perception or of visual stimuli. And then we got the temporal lobe. Temporal lobe is the lateral one, and it's the area for conscious perception of auditory and olfactory stimuli. And it's going to be also uh, proximal to the insula. The insula it's going to be deep to the temporal lobe. So in order to see the insula you would kind of have to separate the frontal lobe from the temporal lobe which is what I'm trying to resemble here in this picture. As you can see all of the lobes and parts of your brain have a different function. So we're going to get started here at the frontal lobe and notice how the central sulcus is this separation that separates frontal lobe from parietal lobe. In here, you're gonna find this precentral gyrus. The precentral gyrus is anterior to the central sulcus, and it's the area where the neurons 
uh, direct voluntary movements by controlling somatic motor neurons in the brainstem and spinal cord. And it consists of the primary motor cortex, that's the PMC that you see in here, and pyramidal cells. Posterior to the central focus, we have the parietal lobe and thus this post-central gyrus. This post-central gyrus consists of the primary somatosensory cortex and it's posterior to the central sulcus, like I mentioned before, uh, and the neurons receive somatic sensory information for touch, pressure, pain, taste, and are associated with the visual cortex, auditory cortex, olfactory cortex, and gustatory cortex. The cerebrum also has other association areas. These areas are associated with integrating and understanding sensory or motor information. For example, there is the somatosensory association area, in this area right here, that allows for understanding of size, form, and texture. Then there is the premotor cortex that uses memory of learned movement to coordinate motor activities. Then there is the visual association area that visually recognizes and interprets objects. And then there's the auditory association area that recognizes sound. All right, now it's time for a short discussion break. Now, speech involves two things. One is the formation in the mind of thoughts to be expressed and the choice of words. And two, motor control of vocalization and the act of vocalization. So it needs the formation of word, thought, and choice of words. And this is gonna happen, for example, thanks to Wernick's area. And Broca's area, that controls the motor coordination required for speech. So in other words, uh, the specialized language areas in the brain is gonna be Wernick's area, which once again, it's the analytical area and it also plays a role in personality, by the way. And the speech center, which is Broca's area, uh, which is for speech production, it regulates breathing patterns for speech and it gives you uh, the formation, right, or, or, or speech creation or production. It is also true that we have something that we call hemispheric lateralization, which means that each brain hemisphere has a specific task for a specific situation. For example, the left hemisphere is typically the area for the speech center, writing, language, and mathematics. Meanwhile, the right hemisphere, it's the area for analysis by touch and spatial visualization. Now, what happens regarding uh, Wernick's, for example, is that Wernick's area is more developed in one hemisphere and is responsible for the verbal symbolism and related intelligence. So 90, 90%, uh, 95%, right from 90 to 95% of the population has a left dominant hemisphere and Wernick area can be as much as 50% larger in the dominant hemisphere. Last but not least on this video, visualize is the pons, medulla oblongata, and cerebellum. So the pons, remember it relays information to the cerebellum from here, uh, and the thalamus also here. This is gonna be more internally, not externally uh, on this lateral view. But the pons relays information to the cerebellum and the thalamus and it regulates somatic and visceral motor centers. The medulla oblongata, which is this structure right here, it relays information to the thalamus and brainstem also. And regulates heart rate, blood pressure and digestion. And last but not least, with the cerebellum, 
it coordinates somatic motor functions and it adjusts output of somatic motor centers resulting in smooth operation or balance. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And if you have any comments or suggestions, you can leave them on the comment section below. And um, last but not least, don't forget to check out my Etsy store, Queen Mary Anatomy. That's it. I'll see you next time.